Good morning and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com, and this is Trading Places Live. It is Tuesday, November 26, 2019. Today, the markets are just going crazy. They had another big breakout yesterday. We've got a lot of stuff to cover today. Want to go ahead and jump right into the agenda. Of course, daily market recap, earnings spotlight, upgrades, downgrades, those are typical. We've got a lot of charts to show you today, chart breakouts. And then, of course, we will wrap it up with three you must see. Let's talk a little bit first, though, about upcoming schedule. Thursday, of course, Thanksgiving Day, U.S. markets are closed, so there will be no trading places on uh, Thanksgiving Day, so no uh, Thursday show. Be back next Tuesday, though, so make sure uh, you're here to join me then. Uh, also want to announce that this Friday, November 29th, 2019, I'm going to be doing a Market Vision 2020 mini-series event. We have seven of these mini-series events uh, featuring various speakers. I'm going to be doing mine on Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern, the creation and design of winning portfolios. I'm going to show everyone how I put together these four portfolios that I have. All four of them have beaten the S&P 500 since inception. Uh, my model portfolio has absolutely crushed it. It's up about 33 or 34 percentage points in just a little over a year. I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can help create and design your own winning portfolio. In order to do that, though, you do have to be, in order to come to that session or to get the recording, you need to be signed up for the Market Vision 2020, not the actual event, just the newsletter. So I want to show you, if you go to earningsbeats.com and click at the top, there will be a um, Market Vision 2020 tab. If you click on that, you'll see this come up on your screen. All you have to do is register, put your name in and email, no charge, no credit card. This is a free newsletter. It just keeps you up to date on what's going on. Uh, we actually had an announcement this morning, a big announcement this morning, that the uh, keynote speaker for the event has been confirmed, and it is going to be John Murphy. I'm so excited. I mean, uh, all the, the you know, I'm pretty much self-taught, but I did read John Murphy's books, and if there's one person that's kind of influenced my approach to the market, it's John Murphy. So you can imagine my excitement, our first online conference, having John Murphy as the keynote speaker. Really excited about it. But again, go into earningsbeats.com. And at the top, there will be a Market Vision 2020 tab. Click on it. It'll bring you this page. Put in your name, email, and then you can begin getting the updates throughout the next couple of months, including room instructions for Friday's event. So you definitely want to go in and fill this out. All right, let's take a look at what has been transpiring in the market. It was another record-setting day on Wall Street yesterday. Dow Jones Industrial Average up 191 points to set a new record high close. Uh, it didn't quite reach its intraday high that was established a week ago, but it did set a new closing high. The S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ 100, all set intraday and closing uh, all-time highs. The uh, small caps, the S&P 600 small cap index, huge move up. Still got a ways to go to get to the all-time high, but this is a 2019 closing high yesterday. And you can see the outperformance there, 2.44%. Huge day for the small caps yesterday. I think this could be the start of something much bigger. I'll talk about that in a bit. The 10-year uh, Treasury yield last check was down about three basis points, 1.74%. Uh, technology leading yesterday up 1.46%. Healthcare has just been on fire it continued its big run, another uh, gain over 1% yesterday. The XLV has been looking very strong. Here's the IWM, another barometer of those small caps. This is uh, the ETF that tracks the Russell 2000 small cap index, and you can see that big breakout right there. We had been going sideways, bounced off that 20-day, bounced off price support. Huge, huge move yesterday on the IWM. A couple of areas that... Uh, are breaking out. One has uh, been on fire. That's the biotechs over here. That's been leading the healthcare group to the upside. But also gambling, uh, gambling stocks came out uh, with a breakout yesterday. Big move up yesterday, more than 2%, and did clear its highs. So we've got a breakout in gambling. And that's a little bit surprising because the money has not been rotating into consumer discretionary. It's actually been rotating away from consumer discretionary. But you can see there's still broad participation in this rally. We're still seeing other areas perform well also. 
As far as uh, economic news, we're going to look at this 10-year Treasury yield, get the update here. Uh, there are a couple of reports coming out today. Uh, one that just came out just a couple of minutes ago. I haven't seen it yet, but September Case Shiller Home Price Index. The expectation was for a rise of three tenths of one percent. October new home sales coming out at 10 a.m. 707,000 units. That is the estimate. November consumer confidence 126.9. Taking a look at some of these indexes that I was just talking about. Here is the Dow Jones. Dow Jones sideways consolidating for a while, but now we are in breakout mode. I also want to show you that as we make this breakout, look at what's going on with the volatility index. It closed at a 52-week low on a daily chart. I read something the other day that the Dow, you know, the S&P 500, whatever, we were breaking out, but it's a nervous rally. And I thought to myself, uh, this person obviously doesn't follow technical analysis, doesn't look at the VIX because this is not a nervous rally. This is uh, nervousness completely leaving the market, which is very bullish for stocks. So just take note, that volatility index, when it's breaking down like that, that does support this bull market. Other indices, here's your S&P 500. Again, sideways consolidation, breaking out, continuing to move higher. And then we've got the NASDAQ, another breakout, pretty much the same looking charts, NASDAQ 100 moving up. But this was the one that was a little different. And this is the small cap, the S&P 600 small cap index, because we had been looking at sideways consolidation all year, not just the last couple of months. This has been going on all year. Every time we get up to this 990 level, we've been failing. Yesterday, we closed at 995.86. Huge candle. I love that candle moving up and the volume started ticking up as well. So a lot of positives here. Now, we have seen over the past couple of months, rotation taking place in the market. And I want to give you a few examples of what's been going on here. First, I'm going to start with the small caps versus the S&P 500. Now, you know, a lot of us, we, it, I think it's normal to kind of go with recency bias, where you see things that have been happening recently and you just assume that's going to continue. You have to be aware that stock market rotates even during bull markets. And so for the last year and two months, we have seen small caps underperform the S&P 500. We now have a triple bottom in here. If we move back up and can clear this reaction high back in September, I think it is going to be full speed ahead for the small caps. So I would certainly be watching that. Now, breaking this triple bottom to the downside, obviously, would uh, certainly begin to put some, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't, wouldn't feel as comfortable about that call if we start to see another breakdown on a relative basis. But I think we're going to hold, and I think it's going to reverse. Some other relationships that I think you need to recognize are changing. Transports versus utilities. Yes, utilities did very well for two years or almost two years while the stock market was consolidating. But when the stock market takes off, as we saw back in 2016 and throughout the end of 2017, transports generally lead, utilities take a back seat. Since we have been consolidating in January of 2018, you can see transports have been taking the back seat utilities were leading. I think that has changed here in the past couple of months. I expect this is going to continue. Take a look at the banks and the REITs. These used to both be included in the financial sector. And that's when I started looking at the, the, the relationship here. Because banks should do well when the economy is improving. Banks should do better than REITs. And then when things are more defensive, when we're consolidating, that sort of thing, REITs pay nice dividends, kind of like utilities, and they tend to outperform. Well, back at the beginning of 2018, you can see banks were underperforming and have been underperforming REITs for the last 18 to 20 months. I think that has changed. I like banks. I don't like REITs. Um, again, recency bias. We think REITs, okay, last couple of years, they've been doing great. Things change. I think we're going to see interest rates move up. I think that the REITs, those dividends won't be as attractive. And with a strengthening economy, banks will participate more than REIT. So I pay attention to that trend that's been changing. Next up, if we look at the healthcare group, the most aggressive part of healthcare, biotechs. The most defensive part of healthcare, pharmas. Look at the downtrend. Again, since 2018, when we were consolidating, nobody wanted biotechs. And even though pharmas may not have been great, they were certainly much better performers than biotechs. Now that the market dynamics are changing, biotechs are on a roll. And I've talked about this on the show 
in my blogs, to Earnings Beats members. When biotechs get rolling, they are a lot like semiconductors. When they move, they move very, very quickly. And we have seen that now for about the last six weeks, a huge run up in the biotechs. Some of the news out yesterday, uh, really mergers and acquisitions uh, was kind of the rule of the day. Uh, we saw uh, Novartis come out uh, and they are buying medicines company, MDCO, for $9.7 billion in cash. Stock went up. A lot of times when you see these acquisitions, the acquirer goes down, a lot, but that's normally because it's a stock deal. And so the acquirer ha- is basically using its stock as currency. And so as it issues its stock, it dilutes earnings. When you pay cash, you're not giving out any stock. So if the company you're buying is bringing in, num- you know, bringing in something to the bottom line, then that is accretive, and that will result in a move to the upside. I think NVS probably moves higher from here. Schwab came out uh, and announced their uh, acquisition. This was rumored last week and kind of reported last week. Uh, $26 billion all-stock deal. So this is an all-stock deal now. These two companies, when combined now, have $5 trillion in assets. That is a major combination. I think both stocks will do well, especially in an environment where financials lead. Next up, uh, I want to get into some of the um, earnings. So uh, why don't we go ahead and flip the switch here, get into some earnings reports. Uh, You know, yesterday was kind of like earnings season. Between last night and this morning, there were a ton of companies. I'm just going to focus on some of the bigger movers today. Dollar Tree, they missed their their number. Buck eight versus a buck 12. Stock's down 12.5% in pre-market. And when we look at the relative strength, we topped about a month ago, and it's been a pretty steady decline. I still would not have expected a horrible report. I don't see a lot of distribution taking place. I think this surprised Wall Street. So uh, I would imagine that after we gap down, we could come back up at some point, maybe test this 106 area. But I think uh, the more intermediate term is probably going to be lower here with Dollar Tree. Another one that came out uh, not so good, um, BECN which is Beacon Roofing Supply. They, uh, they missed on their top line, missed on their bottom line, a buck four versus a buck 17, announced that their CFO is leaving. Um, now, he did say he was staying on the board, so it's not like he completely left the company, but still uh, just more uncertainty. And after not reporting very good numbers, stock down uh, almost 5% in pre-market action. And when you look at this one, this has been a stock that versus its home improvement group has not been a good performer anyway. So this is not one I would have been interested in heading into earnings. Finally, another down uh, stock this morning is going to be Palo Alto Networks. This was a stock I actually uh, sent out in in our Earnings Beats Digest newsletter. It's a free newsletter. It comes out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. I sent this stock out because it was getting ready to report earnings, and it looked really good on its own absolute chart. And relative to its telecom equipment peers, it was definitely a leader, but the group was bad. And that was a problem for me. Telecom equipment has been downtrending versus the S&P 500 since April. So this has not been a good area of the market. So that always makes me a little nervous. If I'm I'm going to be in a stock, I want it to be a leader, but I also would like to see the the group leading as well. And that's not the case here. A couple of stocks that did report nice results, though, and getting rewarded. Um, NTNX, this is uh, Nutanix. Uh, this is a software company, and you can see back a few months ago, looked like a little character change. And but this is one of the things I'm going to talk about on Friday in creating and designing a winning portfolio. Uh, I just uh, came out with a value portfolio, and it's not really value in the traditional sense, but it's a it's value in the technical sense where you've got a downtrend, and then you come out with earnings, you gap up, you break the downtrend, and then you start an uptrend. That's what the value portfolio is made up of. Anyhow, NTNX has done the same thing here. That was a breakout that reversed the downtrend. Now the stock up today, 18% on its earnings. Beat top line, beat bottom line. Uh, Let's keep going. Best Buy, BBY. This is another one came out with earnings. Beat top line, beat bottom line. Stock up 5% in pre-market. So it looks like it is going to be up here challenging the 78 level. If it opens above 78, I think that would be very bullish for Best Buy. Last one is... um, Dick Sporting Goods, DKS, another very strong report. Beat top line, beat bottom line, guided fiscal year 20 earnings per share higher, and it is up 12.4% in pre-market. I see an uptrend, equal highs, higher lows, ascending triangle. 
And when you look at the relative strength, this one also had been downtrending for the last six or eight weeks, but that was a huge move to the upside in relative strength back in August and September. And when you look at the downtrend on a relative basis, the stock was still in a bullish pattern. It was simply consolidating while the specialty retailers moved higher. So I think DKS looks good here. I expect this breakout's gonna lead to further gains. All right, let's move on to uh, upgrades and downgrades. Gonna go through just a couple of these pretty quickly. CMG, Chipotle Mexican Grill today, upgraded by Cowan, raised their price target from 800 to 970. This is one that I still like. I mean, I know it broke down a little bit here on uh, increasing volume, but when you look at it relative to the restaurant group, it's not far from a 52-week high. I think the stock's going down in sympathy with the overall group. I don't think it's going down because of its own uh, uh, metrics. I look for uh, Chipotle to break back out above the 50 and eventually move to a new 52-week high. I agree with that upgrade. Downgrades, one is Kirkland Gold. Uh, KL, this has been a gold stock that had been a leader for a long time, but look at yesterday, huge volume. I think that uptrend is broken. This also is a character change, changing an uptrend to a downtrend. I do not like the stock. Look at the relative strength now, breaking to a multi-month low. The downgrade today, I completely agree with. One last downgrade, TSLA, Tesla. Uh, big gap up here, had moved higher, was pulling back. It's being downgraded today. I actually think that this is a stock that had moved lower, sideways consolidated, and is now uptrending. I'd be looking maybe for a hollow candle today. We might see a gap down with the downgrade, but I wouldn't be surprised if buyers uh, come back in here on Tesla. I'm going to disagree with that downgrade. One stock that was initiated today, Square. This is a stock that is in that portfolio. I talked about that, uh, that value portfolio after downtrending, came out with its earnings, tried to make the breakout, really strong earnings. Now look at the stock taking off. This was initiated with an outperform, a target of 105. I'm not saying I think stock's going to 105, but I do agree. I think this is a stock that is reversing its fortunes. And you can see it has now moved to about a three and a half month relative high to the financial administration group. All right, that is it for the upgrades and downgrades. We will be back with our poll and chart breakouts right after this message. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're going to take a look at this poll right here. Um, I think that this is an interesting poll, and I, I'm going to agree with the majority here. I thought that that breakout in small cap index was big for a number of reasons, um, and I'll probably talk about that a little bit more as we go, you know, forward in you know next couple of shows, weeks, whatever. Um, small caps, when they get rolling to the upside, uh, they tend to uh, help lead the market. And so seeing them finally make that breakout, I agree, was a pretty big deal. NVIDIA, part of that semiconductor group, no doubt, very strong. And then all these others, I'll tell you what, that gambling index I thought was pretty big too, because it was in the uh, consumer discretionary area, which has not been performing particularly well on a relative basis. So to break out in that environment, I thought was kind of strong as, as well. Let's take a look first at that uh, gambling chart. So if you pull up, this is a one-year daily chart, and you can see all the times that we've gotten up to about 850 or into the 850s, but we haven't been able to sustain it. If you notice the last two times we got up into the 850s, see how we got up here and quickly lost the 20-day moving average right back down? Did the same thing here, up to eight, into the 850s, right back below the 20-day. This time, when we got up to the 850s, we pulled back, we held above the 20-day and broke out again. I think that's uh, pretty significant, and we want to see if that sticks. I would be real careful if the 20-day moving average doesn't hold, but this looks more like a breakout that has um, you know, some, uh, some sustainability, if you will, 
The only thing I didn't like about this breakout is notice down here the volume. There just wasn't much volume on this push to the upside. I'd like to have seen a little bit more there. Um, let's see the others. Well, let's look at the specialty finance chart. Um, this one's breaking out as well uh, above that September high. This was a group that had been leading the market to the upside throughout this you know, first eight um, months of the year into, into September. And remember when I said a lot of things were changing back in late August, early September, and even into October, we've seen a number of things change. Well, it looked like things were changing for specialty finance, but this group has battled back. Being part of that financial group that's been outperforming, I think certainly has helped. So it's battled back on, a, on an absolute basis to make this breakout. I thought that was uh, significant. Uh, let's take a look at the DJUS AI, which is the electronic equipment group. This was a pretty big breakout as well. And there you can see the volume that was missing from the gambling stocks. Here's your breakout. There's increasing volume. I think we're in a nice flag pattern. I think this is a group that's going to go higher. You can always go into stock charts, look at this industry group, um, and then uh, click on the industry group, and it'll give you a lot of the, the individual stocks if you want to find individual stocks within the group. Um, and then finally, the small cap. And there you can see it, that sideways consolidation and that breakout there. Very, very important. Uh, NVIDIA. Let's see NVIDIA here on its chart. It really broke out, big breakout back in October here, taking out the April high. But it had just, after uh, early November, move up to 210. You can see a lot of the sideways consolidation. This included its earnings report. It actually went down on earnings and then came right back up and cleared it. And I talked about when it was able to reverse, it had good numbers. They came out with strong results. Um, once they broke back out to the upside, I thought that was a bullish move. And it is continuing it. So I think that's significant. Splunk. I, I would have been hard pressed. I was thinking about maybe going with Splunk as the most impressive breakout for a couple of reasons. Number one, two days ago, it wasn't even close to breaking out. And if, if we pull up a relative chart here, you will see that Splunk relative to software was just simply going nowhere. It was down near 52 week low. So this was quite the impressive turnaround on Splunk going from $127 and being one of the worst performers in software to all of a sudden breaking out to a 52-week high on very heavy volume and now trading at about a six-month relative high to its software peers. That was pretty impressive over just a couple of days. So for those that maybe talked about Splunk or, or voted for Splunk, um, I'll give you your props on that one. I think this was a pretty impressive breakout. All right, uh, other breakouts. So now we got the chart breakouts, and this is going to be um, – really important because I think the market goes a lot higher. I've, I'm on record. I've been on record for a while. I've been very bullish. Even during the periods when we were consolidating, when we saw the trade war headlines, market selling off, you had to be aware of it. You had to have your stops in play, but that didn't change my big picture view that I believed the stock market was going higher. And I still think it's going higher. I think it's going a lot higher. With that, um, we need to know when stocks are breaking out, where um, you know, consider putting our money, especially if we get pullbacks. DXCM, Dexcom. When I put my four, four portfolios together for Earnings Beats members, and I do that every 90 days, I put 10 of the best looking charts from 10 different industry groups into each of the four portfolios. This one was one of the stocks that, kind of, that got left out. Um, it's kind of like, you know, if you're picking an all-star team and you saw somebody have a great year, but they, you know, there's always somebody that gets left out. Well, DXCM was one of those stocks that got left out. It was one that I really liked. It's in medical supplies, which has been moving with healthcare. You can see the stock breaking out is now a, uh, it's at a 52 week high relative to its group and it's been going straight up. Now, I wouldn't be jumping in. I think that we've got to let these stocks come back to us, but DXCM looks pretty good. EVER, this is in one of my portfolios and you can see the earnings results here, the big gap up, the breakout, and it has just been on a roll. I think uh, EverQuote continues to move up. Watching the internet stocks, because if we get this breakout on the internet stocks, EVR is a leader in the group. How about a leader in the biotech space? SGEN, Seattle Genetics, huge move. I mean, this stock just keeps going up. It wasn't necessarily a breakout yesterday, but with that move to the upside, look at the biotechs and look at this stock on a relative basis. 
SGEN has been very strong. 20-day test on a stock like this would be uh, an entry point in my view. Amgen, another one in biotech, just completely moving up. Just wanted to point out the relative strength. Amgen, very strong. One other one in the space that I'll mention too is Vertex, VRTX. Huge move. Look at all the sideways consolidation. When we finally made that breakout, look at the volume coming in. And again, relative strength, 52-week high. So if biotechs continue their role, stocks like Vertex are the kinds of stocks that you want to be thinking about, leaders. If you're not interested in the individual stocks, how about the ETFs? IBB, iShares, uh, NASDAQ, Biotech, ETF, just broke out to a 52-week high. IBB looking pretty good. Not all br breakouts are created equal, though. Here's a stock, Stericycle. Um, this is in the waste and disposal services area. Here, it's got a higher price, but if I pull up a chart for you, it's also got a lower PPO. So you're get, getting a breakout, but with a negative divergence. Doesn't guarantee you it's coming back, but what I would do is I'd have a stop in above the breakout level. If it can't hold its breakout with a negative divergence, I'd take my money and run. All right, let's uh, move on. Let's move on to the three you must see because I'm running out of time here. The first one, I'm just going to throw it out there, IWM. This is the ETF on the Russell 2000. Look at that breakout yesterday. I mean, this was one of the biggest developments in the market yesterday, in my opinion. So this one probably could have been the number one chart on the three you must see, but certainly should be included. Volume picked up on the IWM. We made the breakout. I really think this could start a much bigger move in small caps. Next up, let's take a look at... Um, I'm going to pull up the XLY versus the S&P 500. I talked about the fact that this group has just not been leading. Let me uh, show you just the last few years. Get rid of the candlesticks. Volume off. All right. Look at what's happening here. I mean, I'm not ready to throw consumer discretionary to the curb. I'm not going to kick it to the curb. But at the same time, if you're in consumer discretionary stocks and you're wondering what's going on, this is what's going on. Money's just rotating out of the, out of the entire sector right now, which is what made that, that breakout in gambling stocks uh, more impressive. Uh, we've been seeing money rotating away from consumer discretionary in a big way over the last four or five weeks. And this is something to keep in mind. Now, I believe it's probably going to hold on to one of these lows on a relative basis. But until you start to see the XLY move back above that 20 week move, or excuse me, 20 day moving average. I mean, that's when you're healthier, when you're above that 20 and rising, when you're below the 20 and falling, that's when you want to be a little careful about taking on positions in the group. Or if you do take on positions that of a consumer discretionary stock, just make sure you have your stop in play. Um, when the group, when the group is, is uh, declining like that on a relative basis, just makes it much more difficult to make money in that area. All right, the final uh, chart of the day is the, I want to show you the small cap healthcare versus the large cap healthcare ETFs. So the PSCH versus the XLV. It has been downtrending for a while, but let's not forget, again, don't get into recency bias. This was when, when the market moves, like we did in 2017, small cap healthcare crushed large cap healthcare. Now that the market seems to be on better footing, don't be surprised if this continues moving to the upside. So that is your third stock of the three and three. Want to remind everybody, no uh, trading places on Thursday. I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy the weekend. Uh, be safe. Watch football. Whatever it is you do, enjoy your turkey. Um, I'll be back next Tuesday. And again, go to earningsbeats.com and uh, check out the Market Vision 2020 um, event. Sign up for that newsletter and join me on Friday for my mini series event. Everybody have a great day and uh, happy trading.